well, there's normal sports like soccer, basketball, and so on. There's also quite a few nerdy sports like real life Quidditch or Segway Polo. But there's also a really cool sport that's kind of nerdy, but also quite educational and quite a lot of fun, I've been told. So now, Bruno Oliveira will tell us all about this Capture the Flag. Please give a big applause for him. Hello, folks. Uh, first, thank you for so much for joining me in this talk. Uh, so as I was introduced, uh, we're going to talk about CTFs and uh, the main reason why we're talking about CTFs. So this is, this is the uh, motivation behind this, this talk is about um, how, why play CTFs. So just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruno Gonçalves de Oliveira. I'm Brazilian, if that matters. Uh, I have a master's degree in software engineering. I'm a computer engineer. I'm a senior security consultant at First Wave Spider Labs. I have some certs. I have done some talks in some places. And, uh, and maybe the most important here, I'm the Goonie CTF player. So you must think about, well, I'm not a lead X or a hacker or, or whatever you can call, I'm not that guy. So uh, we will see here just uh, a motivation behind what brought me to this area, let's say that. But a lot of you can talk, but you know, there are some discussions related to the penetration test or to CTF players, to white hat guys, black hat guys. And uh, one thing that <laughs> they will say that the CTF player think they think himself about being an ultra hacker or just because he got uh, 100 points on the CTF, on the DEFCON CTF or something like that. So that's not the case, you know. Uh, what I want to show you, it's much more than this, it's much more than points, it's much more uh, than, of course, technical stuff is the base of everything that we're going to say here, but I don't, I don't want to show you some cutting edge uh, technique or anything like that. It's just why I got to this area and I got so excited. So when you're talking about my motivations, so you know, um, after 10 years doing penetration tests, things start to get boring. Let's put this word. Well, it's all the same. It's not like all the same. It's a cool job. I love my job. But you know, after 10 years, you got limited time for doing stuff. You usually got the same thing. Well, if you think about, we got uh, lame passwords. We got some... Uh, usual unpatched stuff, we got, I don't know, we got poisoning. In the past, we got RP poisoning. Now we got the LLMNR poisoning and stuff. So, you know, it's all basically the same. And uh, if you think about, we got some, as I said, that there are those certifications like OSCE, OSCP, from Offensive Security. It's, it's good from what we have nowadays, you know, but it's not even close uh, from what a CTF can teach you. So that's why uh, I got this excitement, you know, so that's why I, I wanted to, you know, to explain this, to talk about this, because I think uh, a lot of people got some, you know, maybe boring, it's not all the same, even on office it's security and mostly on penetration tests, because on penetration tests is all, uh, not always, but it's very superficial, you know? You don't go much deeper on the on software exploitation, on finding vulnerabilities on by your hand. So when you got a chance, for example, to try a new, uh, new technique, I, I will show you this later, but for example, uh, a new vulnerability that came out or uh, a new type of exploitation that somebody just published on somewhere else. 
uh, and you got the opportunity to test that, that's, that's really, gr really great because you can, you can take uh, this new technology, this new knowledge, and, and apply. Because, well, I always say that uh, Einstein s says, said that the, the only knowledge comes from the experience. And I totally agree. So if you take a book and start uh, reading about overflows, reading about, you know, assembly or whatever, uh, it's not the same, you know. <laughs> Everybody knows here, I, I think so. So it, it's not the same. So when you have the opportunity to test whatever you are learning in a real life environment, that will change you. That's my bet. So now, one thing in very interesting that I, I, I would like to say about this. It's like when I was uh, maybe 15 years ago or 17 years ago, when I was a teenager, very excited about learning, uh, buying books, etc. This kind of, you know, uh, I, use, I use this word a lot today. That's because I don't, I don't know any other word that works perfectly in this case. But excitement, you know, to learn. And this is the good thing about it. So you get all this new stuff, it got back, and I'm, I'm now, I can say that I, I'm back like I'm 17 years old again. I'm buying books, I'm learning, I'm talking to people, I'm trying to figure out stuff. So this is the cool thing about this. So that's the real cool, uh, that's the, the, the real motivation behind this talk. It's all that I said now, so I hope you get something and uh, enjoy. So what do you see here? Uh, what is a CTF? Why? But why, right? Why are you going to play this? Why are you going to spend so a lot of times doing this? Where? How cool is it? How can I start? And of course, I'm going to show you some stuff. For example, uh, what I'm going to show you in uh, the technical stuff about it, it's not, as I said, it's not a cutting edge technique, but it's not very common. So this is the word. Uh, it's not common to see. So in an environment that, for example, as, as me doing a penetration test, I have a lot of stuff to check it out before doing something that's new because I have 60 hours for doing the job. So I have to, to hack the network before that. So if I'm going to try, <laughs> I always say that I take a lot of time doing this. And uh, my wife is here to, <laughs> to, uh, to make me not lie. I spend a lot of time doing it, a lot of time. So I try to learn, and uh, all this excitement comes back. So what is a capture the flag? Well, our hacking games involving a lot of stuff. So it's basically, in the end, you have to find some plain test, test a flag in something. Uh, well, or in a system, or in an application, or uh, hidden in a, in a file. So it's basically like that. We are, we, uh, they are running some CTF right now, so it's probably like this. So what are what is what are the CTF are about? So it's most forensics, crypto, web exploitation, reverse engineering, and low-level exploitation. So how how we get it started? So these are some uh, CTFs that uh, it's it starts very easy, but we you see the cool thing about this that <laughs> maybe when you when you take a look at that and, and try some, the first web application that you are uh, seeing, you see that's not, it's not very usual because it's, the cool thing about CTF is not very straight. All, everything's not very straight. So you always have to take a look out of the box, think out, out of the box to ha have an idea of what's going on. This is probably the main site that you have all information about CTFs. So you have all the CTF organizers, uh, the CTF teams, 
the write-ups, and the scheduling. So if you want to know anything about CTFs, it's there. So you can take a look on ctftime.org. You, you can see the team. You can see the score. So the cool thing, you, you can see all the score. And the score is uh, an, uh, annual. So you can see who, who is ahead of you, who is behind, and which CTFs they are playing, etc. It's a, a very organized site. So what you can expect in a, in a CTF? As I just <laughs> put, you can expect new vulnerabilities, as I said. So something that just happened, you see there. So in a well, we are we are we are talking about good CTFs, right? So just to make clear. So maybe something that's just published, and you see there's a there's a challenge there that uh, that is uh, talking about it. So that's the cool thing. However, there are old techniques too. I will talk about this later. So, as I said before, there are new techniques. So maybe a new heap exploitation on Chrome or whatever they apply on the on someone on someone else, and you have to to use it there. Or there is um, a new protection of memory, for example. Uh, I think I I put on the slide, but. For, for example, the Intel uh, put or want to put the, the shadow stack. So it happened uh, like, I don't know, maybe last year or something. I like the shadow stack. And you can apply this technique and what the people are doing to, to bypass this and applying their real life. So, but old too and old school. And I, I, I said, why? why? old school. Well, in our area, it's very easy to, to see people trying or wanting to join this offensive security stuff, you know? It's very popular. It's very hyped to be a hacker, a hacker. So they want to do that. So, but now, well, when I started 17 years ago, we, don't have, we didn't have so much information. We have, in what information we had in the past, it was usually good, normally it was good, but now you have a lot of people talking about a lot of you know? So you, you see a lot of information that maybe bypass the basics. For example, they don't know the three-way handshake in TCP, but wanna hack a, I don't know, a web browser. They are fuzzing stuff, you know? So, when you learn the basics on low-level exploitation, for example, there are a paper for that, the, a paper about the heap exploitation that's very famous, uh, House of God, House of Everything. I forgot the name of the paper, just because I'm nervous, not because I don't know. <laughs> ah, exactly. So this paper was published, and then uh, in the next one, someone, this guy published this. This guy never came up to see, to to say that he did this, this paper. Uh, his nickname is Fantasma, Fantasmal Fantasmagoria. Maybe he's here. So, and, uh, and the next one, they published someone, he, he, he didn't put any uh, proof of concept of his techniques, just the techniques. And the next frack, someone uh, published the Maleus Desmaleficaram, right? So in this paper, there are box and etc. This is, it's a, a very nice paper to read. So if you want to enjoy the low-level exploitation, it's the basics, you know? So that's why uh, old things are cool too, because we need, to, uh, we need to understand the basics before anything. So as I said before, uh, new vulnerabilities. Uh, Last, last year was released some vulnerability in WGET, and one month later, or in the same week, I don't know, there was the second inside 2016, and there was this vulnerability to exploit. So, you know, you can try. That's, that's the thing, that's the cool thing about it. Yeah, you just saw the, pub, the, the paper, and you can apply your knowledge or try to exploit utilizing this knowledge. That's cool. Uh, I was uh, talking about the 
Shadow Stack. So in Tokyo Westerns MMA 2016, there was a, a challenge about this, and it was very nice. It's just, you know, so you have all this information that you can get from these challenges and apply and, and learn, you know? Well, I put some, uh, let's say, tips here in how to get started on this area, on games. So, for getting started on exploitation, you mostly need a web server to monitor requests and burp. Well, you can crawl, you can brute force, you can uh, check the requests and responses uh, live, right? So this is a cool thing. Uh, headers, etc., cookies. So you, when you were talking, I'm not, as I said before, I'm not an expert in nothing. So, but if you wanna, when you're talking about web, we have a lot of stuff to do. And uh, as you see, on web exploitation challenge, we must see uh, some restrictions. For example, this is some uh, few challenges during the web exploitation. So we have restrictions of space. So, and you can use that. For example, you have remote uh, command execution, but you can use this way to bypass the space filter. You have, well, cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting uh, is probably the most fun uh, because there are a lot of stuff that you can do with cross type script and it's not just for the alert. So when you're doing a penetration test, maybe, uh, you just, ah, I just take the proof of concept uh, on alert and it's good to go, you know? But there, if you wanna, if you wanna see the, the, the flag, you have to go ahead. SQL, SQL injection, well, this is not work, sorry. So you need something else, and there are a lot of restrictions too. Uh, I didn't put here, but if you if you take a look on SQL injections challenges that were released in the past, you have some idea. File uploads. Well, this is <laughs> well. I see. I saw some paper in like I don't know some last week about the PayPal compromising in the bug, uh, bug about stuff. Did you read that? So basically the guy said that when you see a file upload, a penetration tester always shakes, you know, because something's there, you know. If it's not well configured, something's there and, and something's there too. And local file include. When you're talking about local file include, you may be, uh, checking dot dot slash dot dot slash, but uh, the most common uh, thing that you can do uh, with a local file include in a challenge is using PHP wrappers. So this is just, for example, for th this will convert the source code of upload.php and you sh and you show encoding in base64 and then you have all the the source code so this is very common to see in a, in, a in a penetration test no but in a in a challenge from ctfs so what i can say about uh, exploitation web exploitations about this but uh, of course there are a lot of stuff a lot of stuff going on and if you are involved in, if you like web exploitation, and you never played CTF, CTF before, you love it, because there are a lot of ways and things to do, and things that you learn, and that's the important thing here, that you learn. And even if you know this stuff, I would say, I would say share. So, someone said before, share is caring. Share is care, so this is the stuff. So why not just publish a write-up telling how you did it and, and share with the community, you know? Somebody else can take this information and learn something from there. So it's not just about learn, but it's about teach too. And I have to say, um, I got started on this area really raw, 
on the low level exploitation. And I have good friends behind me uh, on the team that I didn't know, but I was invited to the team. I started playing, and two guys were like really rock stars on a low level exploitation and are really teammates, you know? They helped me a lot, and when you, if you join a team, for example, just for playing or for learning, teaching, whatever, you have, it's good to have somebody else for taking you in this journey, you know? Uh, it's really hard to learn by, by ourselves because, as I said before, the information, now we have so much information about a lot of stuff, and this makes everything harder because we don't know what information we can trust and how it's written, etc. Every, everything involves that. So, about reverse engineering, some essential tools. Well, disassembler, IDA Pro, basic. I really like Binary Ninja. Hadari 2 is just for elite people. <laughs> I'm not very used to it uh, Hadari. And, uh, but it, of course, it's a really powerful tool and really necessary for, if you understand that, that tool, you, you'll be good. So, and of course, the debugger, etc. I put there all EDBG, WinDBG, GDB, just to make it examples, but one thing that I will say uh, in the final, it's that we don't have so many Linux Windows exploitation or reverse. So that's a shame. We know I, I, I forgot the, the, the CTF that, that I, I was playing before, and someone put a, a Windows challenge with really high points. And uh, in the description said, don't be afraid of this Windows environment. We put a lot of points just because it's a Windows, you know? And you, if you take a look at who solved this challenge, just few teams. Just because, well, we have to normally have to put an environment like, a, you know, install a new Windows or whatever. So maybe this is the, uh, an issue for doing the, the, the challenge. And not now, but now it's, uh, is being very used, uh, is being used a lot. It's symbolic execution. Well, if you take a look about symb symbolic execution, it's about uh, running the application with symbolic inputs. So what, what does it mean? It means that you don't know uh, whatever uh, you are inputting you're trying to solve constraints in the execution flow, in our case here. This, this symbolic execution, it's a term that's used, uh, it's very, uh, it's highly used in the software engineering, but it's now being applied a lot on the, on the security, and uh, it's about it. So, mm, no, I, it's not here. Well, but it's simple. It's, uh, you have to go in a way, you have two ways for going, uh, or maybe 10 or maybe 100 uh, ways for an execution. So if you open an IDA Pro and open an application, you see a lot of jumps, and these jumps go to different places. So what happens if you go there, and you can imagine an application that there is, um, I don't know, uh, maybe a menu, uh, and there's something hidden there, and, and you have to put a big number or a special word to go into this jump. So this will help you to solve these constraints on the software. We have uh, a lot of framework uh, uh, going on, and, uh, and this tool is really awesome. So I'm gonna show you real fast. But if you want to take a look on this later. So, of course, reverse engineering is all about assembly. So, you have to take a look on data, functions, and jumps. So, no, no mystery here. 
So this is just a sample, right? Um, here we have this function that creates uh, a key, and there we have something else. And you never go there <laughs> in this case. So here the, the challenge was solved just patching the binary from jump not equal to jump. So a little simple stuff, but there's, <laughs> in the past was a lot of using in the crack stuff. When you're cracking some software, this is highly used. Just patching a jump or one or two, and you're good to go. So this, this is one challenge. This, this was one challenge. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to put some sample here. So we're talking about this, uh, this challenge from Google CTF from last year, Unbreakable. So it's, um, it's a tool that you have to put the key, the right key there, to generate uh, a valid product key. So you have to put a password or whatever, and then you generate a key for you. So if you put there something like that, you have, the, you have some failure message, etc. However, if you go here and take a look on the code, so here it's open with the binary ninja. And uh, if you go ahead, you see uh, the function that's called when the product, the, the, the activation fails. And then, so note here, we have the function in the end 50. And we have the, when the, when this function is called, it's because the, the, the product was activated successfully. So we have two functions uh, that you can easily see when you disassemble the, the software. Hmm. So here, uh, uh, just a simple code using Angry. And this is all, it's pretty much all the code that you, can, you, ha you have to use. So you put find where you want to, to be, so where is your thank you or uh, your case here? Which function you, you, you want to avoid? And this is the author, I didn't do this one. So this is the author, so it's pretty much that. You have to execute, you say that's an argument, and after this, you run the code and you got the, the key. So you can see that it's, a, it's, a, it's very cool because it just made some twist on the reverse engineering stuff because you can just put whatever you want and where you want to execute and try to find a way to be there. This is, uh, there's no verbose message here, but when you put that in your code, you see a lot of attempts, what, what it's attempting and whatever just to get to the message. So uh, this is it about the, the uh, I just wanted to put about, uh, some sample from uh, using symbolic execution because it's being used a lot. Actually, uh, a plugin that won, that's like plugin of the year from Ida Pro last year was a very cool uh, plugin using symbolic execution and it's all Click it, I want to hear, I want to hear, make it for me. So it's ridiculous. So if you, if you are interested in reverse engineer, uh, just take a look on this tool. I just forgot the name as well. <laughs> Come? Ponce. That's cool. That's, that's true. So it's Ponce. So take a look if you are curious about it. So if you want to get started on low level exploitation, uh, some essential tools. GDB, of course. <laughs> I always say that GDB, it's the, the first time that I saw a GDB in my life, I said, how people do it? It's like, it's disgusting. Uh, you don't have anything, it's very, very hard to see stuff. But now we got some, a better interface that you can use as GAF. And by the way, this guy uh, that made GAF, it's in our team. He's really awesome. So, and this tool is really, really awesome, really, really awesome. 
You can, uh, you can monitor requests. Uh, for example, it just understands if it can be a user after free. Uh, it's very cool. Take a look. And of course, it's assembler as well. In this case, Binary Ninja or Hadar 2. Ah. If you're not familiar with Pound Tools and you want to join and you want to um, start with this thing, you should take it. It's, uh, it's a lib for Python that you have a lot of uh, handy stuff for doing exploitation, software exploitation. So it's a numerous. You have a lot of stuff there. Uh, so if you are doing, if you want to join the little exploitation, take a look on this, and you'll be happy. So when you get started, what you should see? Well, first thing, check uh, for which architecture is compiled, the, the binary, if it's 32 or 64 bits. Security, check uh, if it has pi. Uh, yeah. Relocation read only. SLR is always uh, it's the full, so you always have the the libraries being randomized in the memory. It's by the full, so I didn't see any 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 challenge that you didn't have SLR uh, enabled. So then you have Pi, you have relocation read only, you have canaries, and you have NX and no executable. So no executable is pretty much in all, but it maybe you see in some uh, in some challenges that are not enough. Uh, it's not enabled. When it's not enabled, it's probably because you have to create some special shell code for that. Uh, you have to be smart. You have to be creative to to create your alphanumeric with 50, 50 bytes or 40 bytes or 30 bytes, I don't know. And um, that's cool stuff. So when you're checking that, you, you, you have an idea on what you're dealing. And maybe it's all enabled, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's just one or two, et cetera. So what are the inputs? This is a very important stuff. So you should locate where you can put some data. Maybe uh, you have to jump around to get something executed. Maybe you have to combine two inputs to get an overflow, uh, an off by one, for example. So uh, where you can put the data, it's very important. Yeah, of course, uh, check the problematic functions uh, before anything. Check that if you have, if you have a string copy or if you have a fget or something like that, uh, probably the, 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 starter, the start problem is there. So you have to take a look. And of course, uh, if you're dealing with heap, check the memory allocations and see if you are writing data in the same memory allocation or whatever. Check what is doing. Now we have the stack clash. Are you, are, you, are you familiar with the stack clash technique that was launched one month ago? So basically, it's when you get the stack overridden by the, the heap or the other way around. So a very cool paper, by the way. And keys. Of course, this is, well, not common. Maybe in some entry level stuff. But maybe you have to, to exploit a string copy. You have to do a, some a reverse engineering and see that, that there is a key that you need to put in the first input for getting to the second input, et cetera. So about the memory allocation. So uh, when you see uh, mostly all the, <laughs> the, the heap challenge, you have to define uh, some length. Uh, how many words you put there, or how many sub allocation will be there? So this is very important when you're talking about memory allocations. So this is another uh, another sample that I want to put here. It's a file stream point overflow that's found on the CD file 
challenge on Pawnable. So this this is Pawnable. This is Pawnable stuff is not. It's like it's open every day. So if you want to join there now, you have, you can create. You have a lot of uh, cool challenges there uh, rela uh, related to uh, low level exploitation. None uh, was trivial. None. Even the first one is not not, not that trivial. So that's cool. So you see that. So. Uh, if you're familiar with this technique, this is not, uh, it's not a very common technique. You, if, you, if you look for this information, if you look like this, file stream pointer overflow, you see something like, you, you see something there, you know? But if you don't know what you're looking for, so for example, in this case, well, I'll show you. So in this case, we have only uh, the noise equitable enabled and the allocation read only was just partial. So if you're able to overwrite the GOT, the global offset tables, you were able to do it because the reallocation read only uh, is just partial. But it's not the case as well. So here is the, the software. It's a very simple software. You can open, read right to the screen and close, and then you go out. So the first time that I saw that, I saw, well, you can r open a file in the system. So if you're familiar with a low-level exploitation in modern computers or anything like that, you see that if, uh, the first thing, when you don't have, uh, you're not able to write a shell code, or you don't have any space that is uh, executable on memory, you have to use uh, ROP payloads. So when you use uh, raw payloads, you need, uh, well, that's not what I'm gonna <laughs> I would say. But uh, the, the thing here is that you can open read any file, and you need uh, a leak from the system to use the library C, for example, when you're talking about the Unix stuff. So you need a leak. You need, you need somewhere that's leaking an address from library C then you take the base, and then you find whatever function you want to call, and then exploit. So in this case, um, a file in the system, when, a, when a, there's a file in the system when the software is running, that is proc self or proc the number of the PID maps, and this file leaks uh, the addresses, including the library C. In this case, you wouldn't be able to see in the first time uh, the address, the base address, just because there's a limited number of bytes that's being showed. However, the, the file is never closed when you open that. You have to close. So if you read one more time, you get the second, uh, the second part of this byte. So the, the file, will be, the file is, will be split in, for example, I don't know, if you have, I, I don't remember, maybe it's 40 bytes. Uh, you have like 40 bytes each time that you're reading. So think about that. Uh, I always say that when you solve a challenge, it's very easy after all. After solving, everything is easy. When you're doing, it's very hard. So keep that in mind, because so, sometimes you, you want to show that stuff, and you show very straight. For example, in a penetration test, when you're showing in your report, you don't, don't really show your attempts. You, really, you just show your way for doing it. And somebody, maybe somebody that's not uh, related to the, to the area, can take a look and say, ah, that was easy, you know? Ah, he found a Microsoft SQL with SCA, uh, with no password. Well, you found that, but you find after scanning, I don't know, maybe 2,000 computers and in a port, in a very different port. So that's one thing that you keep in mind. After you saw, the, after you, you see the... Uh, the write-ups or whatever you're, you're, you're doing, it's very easy. Trust me, 
I spend a lot of time on this one. Then, well, you got that. So if you, I read one more one time, I read one more time, and then I put on the screen, and then I get the libc base. You know, you can see there. So this is very important. Normally, uh, they will provide you the libc that they are using because the offsets from uh, the functions are different. Or in the other way, they won't. When they, when they won't, you certainly will know that uh, an address of puts, an address of another function, and the difference between these functions can lead you to discover the, the library C. So this is one thing. So then we have the leak. So now we have to find the vulnerability because in, 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 this, in this challenge, the leaking was not really the problem, but uh, in the most of challenges it is. Uh, the leaking is part of the problem, so not in, in this one. So here uh, we have uh, F scan, I scan F, and I F close there. So we know that scan F is dangerous in this time. I, I can overwrite the f close argument in this section, in this, in this software. So what I can do from there? So that's the point. This was very easy. If you take a look, you go ahead and open a file, try a billion bytes, and then you go to read, try a billion bytes. You know, every space that you have to put bytes, put it <laughs> and, and, and try it. So in this case, it was in the exit uh, menu uh, when you put a long, uh, a long input, you overwrite the F close. So from there, after spending <laughs> some few days, I mean, I think so, I don't know, I discovered that. So when you're closing a file, um, you have a file, a file structure in the, in the memory that contains uh, mostly where the data on the file is and some headers and some stuff from this, uh, from this file and a lot of stuff. And one of this stuff, it's called IO file jumps. If you take a look in a file structure in, a, in memory, you see all this structure and it's calling in the end the structural IO, IO file jumps. This, this file jumps, it's a function in, in library C. So what you can do from there? If we overwrite this function, what we get it? So what we should do? Well, we leak it, the library C, so we're good. We know where the library C is. So we find the system. This is the way that you find. So this is the offset. So this is the, the library C provided by the, the challenge. And I try to find system. And this is the number of bytes more that you need to, uh, to do the, the math after the, the base library C. So when you got this, so in this case, I don't know, you can just uh, do the math, just that address plus this address, and you got the system function. Uh, so, I create a file structure in memory, and I put a system as I/O file jumps. So uh, here, as I, we don't have Pi enabled, so sorry, I can I can be here. So there, uh, it's where the data is. So after after you're debugging, you see that this uh, data that will be allocated in memory are on is on this address, is that this address. Then we got, in the end, uh, instead of the I.O. file jumps, we have a system. So we, have, we are calling the system function instead the file jumps. And in this, in this, in this place, normally, is the header of the file structure. That starts with fbad. O, o something. So in this case, this, uh, this data will be allocated exactly on, 
ASP plus four bytes. And uh, when you check that, you see, so what we did here, uh, we create, we, we, we trigger the overflow. And then we can overwrite the address that we are, that we, we will be using the F close. So this address is this address just, just uh, below the 32 A's. Then we got the, the file structure. So this is the file structure that you're dealing, the, the three last lines. And our file structure sets that our IO file jumps, it's a system. And our and the argument for the for this is the slash bin slash bash. So in the end, you get executed, and you get a shell. So this is uh, what I was talking about. Well, we need to. This information was very helpful to me to understand a lot of stuff. And maybe just giving a talk fast like this, you don't get the point. It's not, it's not getting the flag. For me, it's not just getting the flag, but it's, it's trying to understand what I don't know. And this was a, a case like this. I didn't know about this kind of overflow. I didn't know how to, to exploit this stuff. And I learned it. Some uh, cones about the CTF. Guessing. So in a lot of CTFs, you, you have uh, some guessing stuff. So something that's not technical. You have to guess. Well, it's not my thing. And most, for the most of the CTF players, too. So that's not the thing I, I, I like and nobody likes, actually. As I said before, 99% of the, it's Linux for exploitation. So you don't have a chance to to deal with this uh, Windows stuff or new, techs, new techniques involving Windows. So that's a shame. Well, I put here self-disappointment because when you lost 40 hours of your life doing, trying to do something that you can get it, man, it's hard to swallow, you know? But in the end of the day, you see that you could learn, you, you saw a lot of stuff. But this is something that you, you have to, you know, to wait. And sometimes are very hard. Uh, so 72 hours will not be enough for a common guy like me, you know. So that's it. Uh, lessons learned from here. To me, it's about learn, 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 learn. Share is care. So take a look in what you're doing. Try to uh, spread your word and share what you learn and what you're doing. That will be helpful for someone. This is pretty geek, <laughs> but having fun and knowledge, well, you know, I'm not this kind of a very geek guy, you know, this guy. I drink, I smoke, I do a lot of stuff, you know, but I have a lot of fun with CTFs. It's really good. And as I said before, well, I don't know if I put, well, I put here. In conclusion of that, uh, I could go back to my roots, you know, where I came from, where, why I'm in this area, why I'm doing this. Because in the, in the beginning, it was like I was, very excited, I want to learn, I want to do stuff, and then I got a job, you know. You have a family, two kids. You're doing your job, you know. And job is always job. You know, you can have the most fun job in the world if you have a boss and you have a, or you have a client. It's a job, you know. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, maybe you're not that uh, happy with what you're doing. So when you got this free time and got some space for doing whatever you want to do, uh, it's cool. And in my case, I got back to my roots. I got back to, to learn, to read, to exploit, to pow. <laughs> so that's the, that's, that's the thing. Knowledge is really fun again.
and Bound Age is pure excitement again. So, you know, we are in the in a penetration test, you got like, you know, domain administrator, you got everything pounded. You know, and this got me back <laughs> that now when I see a pound age, you know, you really, wow, it's beautiful. You have to, uh, to understand and, and to see how, how cool it is. And that made me better on job as well. So sometimes I was, you know, I have 40 hours, and I found this, I found that. And now, um, I, I have to say, in the, in, the last, in the last years that I was not playing, and after 10 years doing the same thing, I was like, a, you know, eh, doing the job. But now the, the thing changed, you know? I, I mean, I'm another person related to that, and that's, uh, and that's cool. So some resource, uh, CTF time again. Uh, you can check that, that later. This, this is a, a video cast, if you can say, uh, from Captain uh, Dragon Sector Captain. He shows a lot of good stuff there. So if you want to take a look, on, mostly on uh, low-level exploitation, this guy is really awesome. We have live overflow. Live overflow is a little bit superficial, but you can started with it so so this is it you have any questions thank you yeah thank you for this very exciting talk i guess i know what i'll be doing the next few weekends good <laughs> thank you so now we have about 10 minutes left for some Q&A time. Are there any questions, if there are? Sure. Yeah, there's already someone uh, lined up. If it's OK, a technical question. So uh, when doing binaries, uh, how do you deal with the GDB offsets being different than when running the binary normally? Because uh, like, let's say I have the address of a variable at somewhere. But when I load it in GDB locally, it's always different. It has oh, to do yeah. with the name, with the environment variables, and so on. Ah, when, when, it, when it, with environment? I'll, uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, so when you cannot uh, attach to a running process, per se, to get the variables real uh, offsets, it can be problematic when you develop the actual uh, payload. Oh, oh, yeah. So well, if I understand uh, right your question, you're talking about variables in the... Um, in the environment, for example, uh, bash equal... No, no, uh, let me rephrase. So when you run a, a binary normally, uh -huh. everything is at some addresses. Okay. But when you run it in debugger, in the debugger, the addresses are, are different, the offsets. Okay, so there are, there are a few protections uh, in debugging. For example, uh, the main protect that you can attach before uh, the, the debugging. So, or you can using a LED preload, for example, and using another another library to to start your software. For example, uh, if we're talking about uh, Linux and you start, uh, you can you can create a binary that will be loaded before the the software with LED preload. Exactly that will bypass the protection. It's one of, for example, it's a, it's, this is a very old protection, by the way, a very old bypass, by the way. So nowadays, uh, I don't really know which, uh, which another protection in Windows, we have a lot of stuff going on, and I'm not very familiar. But in Unix, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with other uh, protections. But one way to do it is using LED preload. So okay. you, compi you compile uh, with a binary. If you take a look at LD preload bypass, debugging stuff, you see a lot of binaries that do this, this job. OK, and is it OK to do one more? So for a student who cannot afford uh, an IDA Pro uh, or yeah, community edition could work, or uh, binary ninja plugins, uh, is uh, like doing just uh, GDB with Radari or uh, PIDA or I don't know, PondDBG or what you showed, all right, you think, for let's say higher level CTF? 
Yeah, so cut this stream. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, because the licenses can get quite, uh, yeah. Well, you have a lot of, I use IDA a lot, uh, but you can use some, another, you're talking about Windows stuff? No, but when you want to do like static analysis on something. So, no, but you do, you're, you're talking about PA, portable executable, ELF, or whatever. Like any binary that you need to reverse, I'm not sure, like, uh, don't yeah, have anything well, specific. Yeah, well, if you're talking about Linux, we have the Binary Ninja, that's a cool, uh, that's awesome tool. I, I talked just a little bit about this, but uh, there's a lot of plugins, and it's in Python, and you can write your own, and now, now you can use uh, symbol execution, but it's just for P, uh, ELF. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about PE, uh, you're, you're right. Uh, the community edition, it's, it's very, well, it's not that bad. I don't use a lot, many, many things from the community edition. But yeah, you're right. The plugins uh, that are very cool, you, you won't be able to use it. But if you're dealing with another, the cool thing about the IDA Pro, that, that supports a lot of architecture, right? Support ARM, support SNES. So, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no other way around. Not that I can say here. As expected. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Please line up at the microphone. Okay, uh, maybe in the meantime, I have one question for you. Uh. So, do you think, or maybe it's already the case, that uh, CTFs will be as popular, as exciting as other esports. So well, if there's a new one published, is there like a rush and people refreshing the leaderboards? Yeah, you know, uh, in Brazil we are having, it's, it's a CTF that's a very, very, very in trial level, but they're, they're trying to do some cool stuff, for example, for the public, you know, because what's the deal about uh, uh, the part? Because as a CTF player, I just want to play, I don't, I don't care. But the, the excitement for the public is the key for the, 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 the games going very popular, right? So, for example, they, they, the guy showed me a, a CTF in, I don't know, somewhere in Asia that, you know, they have a lot of explosions. Every player was, be, was being recorded, his face, his scream. So it was like, you know, it's like, it's like a rock star when the guy was there playing and everybody was watching, and every time that somebody got a flag, some explosion came up, it was like very, well, if they, if they could do that, uh, maybe not as popular as uh, a soccer, <laughs> Might maybe as popular as Legend of something legal that I don't know. Yeah, another YouTube video for me to check out when okay. I get back home. Yeah. Sure. Somebody else? So thank you guys. Yeah, and thank you again very much. <laughs>